Thank God it's finally warming up. It kind of feels like spring break in the middle of Tennessee at Center Hill Lake where Good morning. It is currently Wednesday and I'm about to get ready to go to the salon, but I'm not working today. I am getting my hair done. I'm so excited. So if you guys saw a few weeks ago, I colored my hair myself at home in my bathroom. It was kind of a spontaneous decision. My hair was a really dark brown, almost black, and I did it this really pretty dark like maroony reddish I don't know whatever you want to call it I like my color a lot but if you saw the video that I posted when I did my hair I got it wasn't even hot roots it was like hot mid strand I don't know like a couple inches down from my roots because I had did a bleach bath on my hair because it was so dark and I got like right here in some spots got really blonde and then other spots like you can kind of tell like these front pieces didn't really lighten up much at all and when I first did the color I felt like it looked pretty good like red's really forgiving too so even if it's not perfectly even you usually can't tell unless you're like really going through the hair and like holding it up to the light it covered everything pretty evenly but now as I've been washing it if you've ever had red hair before you know it bleeds a lot every time it gets wet so I feel like as I've been washing it, you can see a little bit more of the unevenness. The color I have on my ends and through here is beautiful. Like, I love that. But then there's some spots where it just looks like more of a brighter, more vibrant red. And I don't love that. And then some spots are just kind of dark still. I don't know. Also, when I first did this color, I didn't know how I was going to feel about it. So I was scared to go too light or too red. So I kept it pretty dark. But... I'm really liking it. So what I'm gonna do is my coworker is gonna do my hair for me. We are going to strip this color out and do a similar color, but just a little bit lighter. And I wanna be more of like a copper brown, more so than like red. And then we're also going to cut a couple inches. I'm just loving how these like old money bobs, as people are calling them, are really popular right now. And I just love the blowout look with the ends like curled under. I am so here for that. Even though I love doing my own hair, but it can be tricky. You obviously can't see and you can't get the best angle all the time. And it's nice every once in a while to just sit back and be a client. I'm going to get ready and then I'm going to bring you to the salon with me and share the process with you. Dress. Now I'm gonna do my makeup. I feel like when your hair is done, it helps everything like come together and make more sense because for me, if I have zero makeup on my face, but then my hair is like styled really pretty and it's all like blown out and swoopy and whatever, I'm like, this, there's disconnect there. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't match. It doesn't make sense. I feel weird. I feel like that hair does not belong on my head, you know? By the way, if you saw my last vlog, that makeup case I got from Timu. I put all the makeup that I've been wearing most often in here. And there's still room for more stuff too. And I feel like I put a lot. But look, all the brushes are up in here. I love this. So as far as what I'm going to be asking for, I always suggest, like people will comment and be like, oh my god, what's your hair color called? What do I ask my hairstylist for if I want that? Just bring in pictures pictures videos that is the easiest way to communicate because i can say to someone oh i want to be cop or like for example my hair now like when i look up cowboy copper it's all over the place i see this hair color i see like more orangey lighter hair colors some people were arguing with me saying that this is not copper but some people will say it is so when it comes to describing color especially don't try to use your words just use photos so what i do is i always save a shit ton of stuff if i see something that's even remotely similar to what i like or if i see something that's close to what i like but it's not exact i will still save it and i will use all of those photos and videos to communicate what exactly i'm looking for because as a hairstylist it's important to not only know what your client likes but if you can show me what you don't like that really helps me hone down on exactly what you want. So these are some photos that I had saved for the color that I'm looking for. And some 
people will include their formula for the color. Don't ever tell a hairstylist, look, this is the formula they used. That's insulting, first of all, because it's not that simple. Color is all about what your starting point is, what your hair type is like, what the goal is, because maybe you're starting out with black hair, this person was starting out with blonde hair. So this is gonna look different on them than on you. So we're, I, we can get you a similar look, but it's gonna take different steps and it might be a different formula. So don't get caught up in like the exact formula. Try, like we, we're professionals, we are artists. You chose this person for a reason. Hopefully you did your research. Trust them. Trust that they know what they're doing. Also, all different stylists and different salons use different color lines. So for example, like this 677 in, I don't even know what color line this is. The color line that I'm familiar with if you told me, oh, 677, that would just be straight brown. There would be no copper, no red in that formula at all. So like the formulas are different amongst different color lines. So be careful with that to show the photo. So yeah, that is inspiration for the color that I like. So similar to what I have, just a little bit lighter and a little bit more brown than red. And then I have a bunch of different pictures and videos of the cut that I like and the general length. So I like it really blunt on the ends. I want it like right at my shoulders or just kind of hovering above. And that's how I want to style it too. So that's important also, like how do you plan on styling your hair normally? While I was over here blabbing, I'm also trying to record a video for Instagram too. Um, and I gave myself all this extra time to get ready, but uh, I need to hurry it up. So I'm going to just do my makeup really fast and I will see you when I'm done with that. Okay, makeup is done. Now I'm going to pop in some earrings. These small huggies are from Ana Luisa and then these other ones are from Amazon. I'll link them down below. Snake chain necklace from Ana Luisa. Can't forget perfume. Of course, I always gotta smell good anytime I leave the house. This is Powdery Hawthorne from Dossier and they are sponsoring this portion of the vlog. Thank you so much to them for working with me again. If you're unfamiliar with Dossier, they make replicas of luxurious brand name fragrances. They have perfumes, colognes, and unisex fragrances. They also now also have reed diffusers and candles for your home. So your home can smell just as good as you do. And I've been wearing Dossier perfumes for years now. And when I tell you, I get complimented on my scent every time I leave my house. No exaggeration. All the girls at work, they know I'm there somewhere because they can smell my perfume. And I love that. But because of how frequently I wear perfume, I'm not about to spend two or three hundred dollars on one bottle. Like, that's just, it's not gonna work for me. So that's why I love Dossier. Their perfumes start at $29. This one in particular is a replica of the Tom Ford Metallique, which originally retails for around $200. And this one was $29 from Dossier. So it's like, come on. Same high quality, same lasting power. And I'm telling you, this one stays on me all day. So if you guys want to check out Dossier for yourself, I will have a link and discount code in the description. You can also now buy their perfumes in store at Walmart. So definitely go check them out and thank you again to Dossier for working with me on this video. Do you want anything from Starbucks? You always gotta look out for your people, especially when they're doing you a favor. And I also got my AirPods. I'm gonna bring those so that way I can edit some Instagram reels while my hair is processing. And I also packed myself a lunch, some like chicken rice with vegetables. I'll see you at the salon. Could I please have a venti brown sugar oat milk shake and espresso? For the record, I like never come to Starbucks anymore, but I have stars that I'm gonna use. So I mean, my coffee is gonna be free. I'm gonna come here and get it. So I am going to explain to you guys everything that we did. So we started first with a Malibu CPR treatment. This is a really gentle color remover. You just mix it with water so there's no bleach or anything in it. It's not gonna do anything to your natural color. It's like a clarifying treatment. It's essentially just going to help fade any permanent color in the hair. So we left that to sit under heat for about 45 minutes to an hour while I just enjoyed my egg bites and my coffee. <laughs> 
And after we shampooed that out, this is what my hair looked like. So you can see way less red and just a lot lighter in general. It really softened up the color. So from here, it was time to lighten my hair. So she went through and just kind of picked out the pieces of my hair that still looked dark and then anything that was lighter, she left out. She just did a full head of back-to-back -back slices, basically. We used very low developer, though. We just did 15 volume, I believe, and just let it sit as long as it needed to. And you can see here, this is what my hair looked like after bleaching it. It still felt really good. That was the most important part, but it was looking very orange, which is good. That's what we wanted. And then after that, she went through and just did a bleach wash on my roots and any areas towards the top that were still dark. When she did the foils, she avoided that area because of the banding I had previously. But now she just wanted to make sure that the entire base underneath was all even and the same color. So I was looking like a Cheeto at this point, but that's... But, you know, that's what we were going for. I forgot to get clips of the haircut, but after this, she cut my hair, then blow dried it so that she could apply the all over color. And it was looking good after it was done. This is the finished cut and color and everything. I was loving it. It was a little bit lighter than what I originally was expecting, but I was feeling myself like I actually really loved it in this lighting. Oh my god, in this lighting, it it does not look at all on camera the way it looks in the mirror. Oh my god, it looks really, really red in here. Let me find different lighting, although all the lighting is going to suck because all the lighting in my entire apartment is really warm and orange to begin with. Um... That's a little bit better, I think. Yeah, you can see that this is a little more true to color. Like what I'm seeing in the viewfinder is what it looks like in the mirror. But let me put you down over here. Yeah, this bathroom lighting is just intense. And I used to have it this short years ago. Like I always used to have short hair back in the day. But like doing a little top knot and then having these cute little pieces on the bottom. So cute. Oh, it feels so good though to have the hair off my shoulders and off my back. And as far as the color, originally my inspiration, as you guys saw, was more of a brown, like a coppery brown. And we both were a little bit nervous about it coming out too dark or too brown because then we felt like, oh, well, that's gonna defeat the whole purpose of everything we just did. I can always go darker and I can always go more brown, but to go backwards, to go lighter, to go more copper is more difficult. My hair feels really good. It feels super healthy. I mean, everything we did was very gentle, like even all the bleaching and stuff. She used 15 volume, so it feels amazing. And plus, you know, we cut several inches off the ends anyway. I'm gonna live with this for the next few days, see how it looks in different lighting and with different clothing and all of that. I'm sure I will end up going a little more brown, but this is fun. I am going to wash my face. I'm curious to see how it looks when I have no makeup on, but that's why I said, and honestly, like having these earrings in my necklace throughout the whole process, even when I was looking like an egghead with the processing cap on, I still felt pretty because I had my makeup on and I had my jewelry, but I'm gonna take all this stuff off and I will show you in the morning in the natural light what it looks like. Good morning. I'm going to just show you my hair in natural light. It's very red. Oh, and don't mind. I still have my skincare. I'm about to hop in the shower. First of all, you see how I said wearing makeup to your appointment will help? Oh, it's raining. Love that. Wearing makeup to your appointment makes such a difference because I am still 
trying to get used to this hair because it was a huge transformation with the color and the cut because i'm not used to it yet i see myself with no makeup and i'm like i look crazy this looks like a wig i look like a clown but yes the hair is very red and as you can see there's a few spots throughout the ends where the color didn't grab as well so it looks a little bit uneven i knew we should have added more natural to the formula but i don't know it's hard in the moment and when we were in the salon like in the salon lighting when it was dark out it looked like perfection i was like oh okay this was exactly what i wanted and then obviously like looking at it in different lighting at home and in the natural light i'm like oh, okay no that is like very far off from what i wanted not saying that the color is bad it's just not what i am going for at this point in my life like right now i just want something that looks more natural but the thing with reds is if you're not a red color specialist which i'm not neither is my coworker. they can be a little bit tricky like it's tricky to formulate the perfect red that's like red enough but not too red and looks natural but it's not too brown and not too light not too dark it's all like a learning process and i feel like that's the best way to learn that's how i have learned everything is just through trial and error and experimenting and like playing around with my own hair especially when you're getting a color correction you might not get the perfect exact color that you were wanting right away after the first session sometimes it takes a couple sessions and it can take multiple steps and multiple hours to get what you want so i'm going in today it's two days later i am going back to the salon in a little bit and we are just going to do one more all over root to end color we're going to add some more natural to the formula i'll share what we end up doing so that's the plan i will bring you to the salon and then i will show you the final hair i'm so excited but this color like look like in this lighting it's perfect this is like exactly what i want it to look like but then once you step out in the natural light, it's like, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to go hop in the shower and get ready. That's the one. Ta da. I need to turn this brightness down. It definitely looks more red. There we go. I feel like that is closer to what it looks like in person. The camera really picks it up more red, but it is just the most perfect dark, coppery, reddish brown. And I love it. It's exactly what I wanted. It's like, depending on the lighting, it's like, is it brown? Is it red? I'm obsessed. And I feel like it warms up my skin, but it's not like too crazy. It's still, a somewhat natural tone let me show you in the natural light the sun's about to set but i love it and i know it's not that crazy different from what i started with because i know there's gonna be comments that are like you spent all that time and it doesn't even look that different from when you started but it is different it is a lot more even it's a little bit lighter it's less violet and like i said the camera doesn't pick it up a hundred percent the way it looks in person it also goes to show you that even things that seem like a simple change it's not always as simple as you think it should be i hope that you guys enjoyed this video thank you for coming along with me on this hair journey if you're not already subscribed to my channel i would really love it if you would subscribe go follow me on instagram and tiktok and i will see you really soon in my next video bye